Hey everybody. Hey, I am just going to spend a couple minutes with you. I want to go over some medication administration for uh, the medications that you as an EMT will be able to um, give your patients. We're going to practice this a little bit in lab, but I want you to have the foundational knowledge coming into lab so that when we hand you these uh, different medications, you know what to do with them. So we're going to go over EpiPen, we're going to go over nitroglycerin, aspirin, and oral glucose. All right, so we're going to start simple first. Uh, probably simplest is going to be aspirin. And so a couple of things with aspirin. I don't know if you can see, this is um, chewable aspirin. It used to be called children's aspirin, but we don't give this to kids anymore. Um, contraindication for this is going to be if they're allergic. If they're allergic to aspirin, obviously this is a no-go. Okay. We also want to look and make sure that it's not expired. We want to make sure that it's the right medication. And we want to make sure that we have the right route. And so the route with aspirin is orally. So we're going to have them chew these because these are chewable. The reason we would give this is for chest pain, not to alleviate the pain. This is not a painkiller. We got much bigger guns if we need to address pain, morphine, fentanyl, those kinds of things. Okay. This is to slicken up those dang platelets so they don't stick together and cause a bigger occlusion in the coronary artery. Okay. It's important we get this in early because it's going to take some time to work. Okay. If I'm giving aspirin, I need to think about nitro. These two play really well together. Okay. So aspirin, if I decide I'm going to give this, the dose is one to four tablets. All right. So if my patient's having chest pain, they've already taken one of their baby aspirin or chewable aspirin because they do that every day. Then I need to give them three more because I'm looking for a dose um, of 324 milligrams. Okay. 81 milligrams per tablet, like it says on the bottle. Okay. So to do this real easy, I do not want to be touching this and then give it to my patient to put in their mouth. Okay. So I'm going to have gloves on. I don't, but pretend I do. Okay. And then to get these out of here, I'm literally just going to dump them into the capsule or the cap. You'll get better at this. And then once I have them in the cap, I'm going to have my patient hold their hand out and I will dump these into the, my patient's hand. I'm going to tell them to chew them and swallow them. No water. I don't want them throwing anything up. Okay. These taste like oranges. They actually aren't, aren't terrible at all. Okay. So one to four for chest pain if they're not allergic. Okay. Now remember I said nitro is the other thing we need to consider. Okay. Aspirin keeps the platelets from clumping together. Nitro is going to vasodilate in the central part of my body, specifically those coronary arteries. So if I've got an occluded artery and I have a patient with chest pain because they've got some heart cells that aren't getting enough oxygen, this could be a really good fix. Now it's very temporary, but it's at least going to hopefully allow some oxygen to get past that occlusion and get those cells fed so they don't die. Okay. So two ways nitro comes, comes in a spray. You probably will rarely see this. Um, as, as an ALS provider, sometimes, oftentimes we carry it this way. Okay. So a small tablet, a spray has the same dose. So if they do have a spray, super simple. I'm going to add, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to check a blood pressure, regardless of how I'm giving nitro, because it has to be over a hundred systolic. Okay. Then I'm going to ask that really important question. Do you take any erectile dysfunction medications? Anything like Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra. If they've taken those in the last 24 hours, this is not going in them, okay? If I've wiped all the contraindications out, their blood pressure's good, there's no contraindications with meds, I simply have the patient hold up their tongue and I give them a little spray. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but yeah, it's just a little shot and it goes right under their tongue, it absorbs quickly. It may give them a very metallic taste in their mouth, and it may give them kind of an intense headache for just a couple of minutes. You can kind of forewarn them of that so they don't get panicked if that happens and then they think something else is wrong. Okay. If your patient has nitroglycerin prescribed to them in the tablet, which is most common, then we're going to do the same thing with all meds, guys. We're going to look at expiration date. We're going to make sure it's prescribed to our patient. Um, and know the route that we need to give this. So a couple of things with nitroglycerin. 
It is very sensitive and it is easily broken down. So the two things it's most sensitive to is light and heat. It comes in this brown bottle to protect it from the light. This one uh, is a colored bottle to protect it from the light. Okay. The other thing is heat. So if your patient's been carrying this around in their front jean pocket for the last six months, it's been living in a hundred degree environment for a long time. It may not be very effective anymore. We can still give it to them. We can still try it. But if it doesn't work, it might be because of the medication and not because of uh, what the patient's experiencing. Okay. The other thing that we think about with nitro um, on this pill, if we open up this bottle, this little teeny bottle will have a what looks like cotton plug in there to keep the, the pills from getting broken down. That is not cotton, that is polyester fibers. One of the properties of nitroglycerin is that it absorbs into just about anything very quickly. So um, if for whatever reason your patient has lost the little cotton plug and they stick a little cotton ball in there, that cotton will have absorbed all the nitro out of the tablets and they, they won't be effective. So um, if the nitro doesn't work, maybe ask some of those questions, okay? So I'm gonna show you what these look like. These are expired, so they are um, not going to absorb into my hand. They're like really badly expired. Um, I don't know if you can see how teeny tiny those are. Um, how they sit on my little finger. So they're very tiny. Um, they're white and they are going to go sublingual. They're going to dissolve under your patient's tongue. So same thing, gloves on. I'm going to check all of my five R's. Okay. I'm going to get one of them into the cap here, which sometimes takes more than one attempt. Okay. I've got one in there. I'm gonna ask my patient to open their mouth and um, lift up their tongue. And I'm simply going to, I'm gonna take this out so I don't give it to myself, just pop it in there. Just kind of chuck it in under their tongue, have them. This is not chewable. It's gonna dissolve under their tongue, okay? I'm gonna give one of these every three to five minutes up to a dose of three, okay? So give one, five minutes later, I'll give another, five minutes later, I'll give another as long as my blood pressure hasn't dropped, okay? If that blood pressure's dropped a lot or it's sitting under 100, they're not getting any more, okay? Nitro, aspirin, got it? Good. Okay, um, let's talk about oral glucose. This is gonna be given to patients with low blood sugar, patients with a history of diabetes that have an altered mental status. Um, or a reason to believe that we have a low blood sugar, okay? One thing has to be in place with this. Your patient has got to be able to swallow. If they're not maintaining their own airway, they're not gonna get this because chances are they're gonna inhale it into their lungs and that is gonna make things get really bad really fast, okay? So if they can't maintain their own airway or they're unresponsive enough that I can't wake them up or I can't get them to talk to me and um, communicate with me, I'm not gonna give these, okay? Oral glucose comes in a tube, and basically what this is is concentrated k syrup, okay? It doesn't taste great, they flavor it, but I don't know that it helps that much, okay? I'm gonna twist this off. This comes in a sticky, goopy paste, okay? It's, it's a little bit runny. Um, I wanna give this whole tube, okay? Now, could I give something else? You betcha. There's a Snickers bar, there's some Skittles, there's some honey, anything with sugar, a can of pop, okay? As long as it's not diet pop, I can give that, okay? But this is what we carry in our bags. So, and this is our go-to if we don't have something that tastes a little better, okay? Peel this off. Um, oftentimes you will have a tongue depressor. You can put that on there and have them suck it off. You can have them actually just suck it out of here if you want to. However, you can get this in there. Now, I know your book says you can put this on a stick and wipe it on their gums, even if they're unresponsive. I say to that, the risk of them aspirating that is entirely too great. I would never 
ever do that to my own patients. So I encourage you to like, maybe not, all right? Call ALS, they can give sugar via an IV and that's gonna be very safe and very quick, okay? So we're gonna give the whole thing. If it improves their mental status, but not completely, give them another, okay? They're gonna burn through this sugar pretty quickly. So be watching. If we get them up and running, we gotta make sure they eat some protein before we leave. So I wanna get them a sandwich, peanut butter jelly, glass of milk, some cheese, something with some protein that's gonna hold them long-term because this will be a short-term fix. If they're low on sugar, they'll burn through this very quickly and they'll be right back in the same shape they were, okay? Sometimes we have patients that carry uh, what they call glucose tabs or uh, some other things. And these are actually like, they look like giant sweet tarts, okay? Um, and the patient would just take these and chew them. Okay, those work as well. Okay, oral glucose. Okay, all right, we're gonna move on to EpiPen because um, these are important um, and we need to know how to do them, um, especially this one, guys, okay? It's an EpiPen, most of the time they come in this hard case like this. Um, it should be prescribed to the patient. Now, this is something you might carry in your rig that your medical director has prescribed to your department. So um, this may be one, excuse me, that we are not um, always giving the patient's medication. Um, indications for this are going to be difficulty breathing. We're probably going to hear straighter. We're going to have some work of breathing. They're going to be working hard to breathe. We're going to have an occluded airway up here. Frequently, you're going to see swelling, swollen tongue, swollen lips, swollen face. Uh, sometimes you'll see hives, but sometimes the swelling happens before the hives have a, a chance to form. Okay, Look in the mouth. Look in your mouth. If that uvula, the hanging down thing in the back is short and fat, your patient's in trouble. If you can't see that uvula because the tongue is so big, okay, this is something that has to happen quick. Um, and this is a life-threatening situation. If you don't get it fixed, your patient will die. Okay. So one thing I wanna make clear, not every allergic reaction needs an EpiPen. A lot of people are allergic to stuff that gives them hives. That's not life-threatening, okay? So if they have hives, they have an allergy, okay? This is for anaphylaxis, that severe allergy that's affecting the airway, okay? So once I realize I want to give this, I'm going to get my EpiPen out, okay? This one is a trainer. Um, and I'm not sure how I can do this because um, I'll, I'll try and show you, okay? But you can't see my thigh from here. If you don't remember how to use this, guys, please take the time. There are pictures on them and there are written instructions. Don't do this wrong. This is a one-time shot, okay? Got my EpiPen. Um, it's got two ends on it. It's got an orange end and a blue end, okay? This blue cap is gonna come off. And if you can see, it's kind of got a little pointer thing on it that fits into that hole. What that does, this blue, that protrusion that's there, keeps this from sliding back and exposing the needle, okay? So this is the stopper, this is the needle end, okay? Pull this off, you're gonna grab a hold of it, and you're going to, and I'm gonna show you on my hand, but this is gonna go in the thigh, halfway between the hip and the knee on the lateral side, so the outside of the thigh, halfway between the hip and the knee. And I'm literally gonna push it in, it's very firm, and I'm gonna hold it for the count of 30, okay? Um, I need time for this medication to inject into the tissue. And then I'm gonna pull it out. Now this has a live needle in it. So this goes in a sharps container when you're done. I'm gonna rub that area. I'm gonna write down the time I gave this and I'm transporting my patient immediately, okay? This is full of pure adrenaline. So what you're gonna see is your patient's going to get shaky, they're going to, blood pressure is going to go up, heart rate's going to go up, they're going to probably be a little trembly, but it should very quickly reduce that swelling in the airway. I'm going to post another video that shows you how quickly and easily these work. However, guys, this is one of those things that we rarely give, and when we need it, 
it is a life-threatening situation. So practice with these guys. You guys should have trainers in your department. If you don't, they're free. We can get some for you. Practice, practice, practice. Because it's simple, we tend to think it's not important. It's really important, okay? Blue cap off. Grab a hold. Halfway between the hip and the thigh. I don't know if I can do this. Okay. I'm going to go in. Make sure there's no phone or keys in your pocket. Okay. I'm going to go in. Hold for the count of 30. We're done. He goes in the sharps container. Okay. All right. We'll play with those in lab when you get in. So happy learning.